Ever thought about exploring the magical city of Tbilisi, but you want to make sure you do it right? Today, we are about to embark on an adventure through Tbilisi, unveiling 12 of the most mesmerizing gems the city has to offer, places that even some of the locals don't even know about. From ancient castles to culinary delights, there's so much we have in store for you. So buckle up, traveler. Let's uncover the secrets of Tbilisi together. First, we begin at Queen Darijan's Palace, which was a palace built in the 1700s by a Georgian monarch for his wife, Queen Darijan, and in the 1800s was taken over by the Russians. Afterwards, this became a cinema and a museum, and it's a place that you can go and book a tour, but also what you can do for free is enter the grounds and get a beautiful view of the city of Tbilisi from that iconic blue balcony. You also have a stunning view of the iconic Narikala Fortress and the Old Town Really, really beautiful site. And what's really cool about Tbilisi is it's a fairly small city. It's not too long, even just by walking and especially by driving to get from one destination to another. And it's definitely worth adding to your Tbilisi itinerary. And for hidden gem number two, we move to Kalantarov's house. This was a house built in the early 1900s by an oil tycoon. And he built this house as a pledge of his love for a famous opera singer and specifically designed the interior of the house to mimic the interior and exterior of the Tbilisi Opera House, which is a very, very interesting design. It incorporates these kind of different Arabic and Persian elements. It's kind of known as Neo-Moorish, so very, very unique and interesting. And as you'll see in Tbilisi from more of these destinations, it's this very interesting mix of sort of the East, specifically the Middle East and Persian influence mixed with that European element. So it's a really great encapsulation here, really cool photo spot. And basically to get in, you just walk through the doors. Uh, there'll be a code that you're allowed to enter. It's five and eight, hold it in. You can open the door and go up and kind of explore a really quirky and interesting place, which you'll see is fairly common in Tbilisi. And speaking of bizarre places, next we move to the Maiden Bazaar, which is actually a private business that is owned. And basically what it used to be was this wine cellar where you had the traditional old Tbilisi Bazaar up above, this really famous old time market. And that underneath area where they stored all the wine, later it became actually a tunnel for transportation for people to walk through. And now a business purchased it and it's this really cool underground market. And the best way I can describe it is like a microcosm of Georgia. So here you can kind of go through and just walk through and view all the different cool Georgian art, clothing, food, teas, and wines, all of those cool things that make Georgia unique. You can find here in the Maiden Bazaar, like I said, it's a private business. The staff there are super nice and accommodating, answering a lot of the questions that we had, letting us film in there and walking through the bazaar will lead you very close to the entire reason that Tbilisi exists, as well as our next experience, which are the Tbilisi sulfur baths. The word Tbilisi is actually derived from two words that translate to warm water or warm place in English. And the reason for this is the old king over a thousand years ago came to what is now Tbilisi and fell in or somehow discovered these warm sulfur baths and claimed that they had magical properties, fell in love with the area and said, this is where I'm gonna make the capital of my nation. So because of the sulfur baths is why Tbilisi was founded and how it originally created, so extremely important. Since then, apparently even conquerors from other nations have come in to take Tbilisi specifically for these sulfur baths. So really, really hyped up. And what's really cool is of course, you as a tourist can experience these magical healing waters. There are a few different sulfur bath houses in Tbilisi. The most well-known is Treli Abano. This is kind of what you see if you ever Google images of Tbilisi, this gorgeous facade made in the Persian style with these beautiful blue and ornate tiles. And you can go there for free and get photos in front, or you can actually pay to get a private sulfur bath room, which is basically this dungeon looking room, for lack of a better word, that you can go in and then you have a small, uh, extremely hot sulfur bath and a shower. You can book anywhere from a minimum of one hour plus as much time as you wanna spend there. Uh, you can order drinks and food as well. Allie and I went, we just went for the sulfur bath because that's what we wanted to experience. 
very, very interesting experience. It did feel amazing afterwards. My entire joints felt a lot better afterwards. I felt a lot more calm. Maybe it's placebo. Maybe there is some kind of benefit to the sulfur baths. It's a very, very cool experience. And because Trelli Abano is the most well-known sulfur bath, it is the most expensive. For two people, for one hour for a basic room, it was about 30 US dollars. But then literally right next door, there are two other sulfur baths that are much cheaper because they're not as well known. Definitely worth experiencing a sulfur bath when in Tbilisi. By now, after all that sightseeing, you're probably getting a little bit hungry and for good reason. Georgian food is some of the most interesting and delicious food I've ever had in my entire life. It's amazing. I could make an entire video about Georgian food alone. So what I've done is after going through Tbilisi for two months, trying as many amazing restaurants as we could, and Ali and I have linked our favorite restaurants in Tbilisi in the description section of this video to make it easy for you to find. And if you'd like to see a full video about Georgian cuisine, let me know in the comment section. If we get enough comments, I'll be happy to make one. Now moving a little bit north of the city center of Tbilisi, we arrive at the Chronicles of Georgia. There are these magnificent, gigantic columns that actually use artwork to tell the history of Georgia, going all the way back to the original humans that existed thousands of years ago. Arguably the first Europeans that actually ever existed were here in Georgia, all the way up into modern day obviously showing a lot of the religious and Christian influence on Georgian culture as well. If you get there in the morning, which is what Ali and I did, it is beautiful with the sun rising kind of behind the columns, beautiful pink and purple skies. No one else is there. And it is a magical, magical place. It's definitely worth going to and getting some shots of. You also have these beautiful views of the rolling green hills around you. It's just like the rest of Georgia. Oh my gosh, it's so magical. Uh, definitely worth adding to your itinerary. Now, we can't talk about iconic Georgian monuments without mentioning the Mother of Georgia statue. This beautiful structure was erected to symbolize the strength, warmth, and culture of Georgia. And as most of the sites in Tbilisi, it's completely free to visit. You can either go and hike up there or take a car ride up. But this place has one of the best views of the city of Tbilisi, especially in the morning hours and closer towards sunset. And it's just a short walk away from one of my favorite sites in Tbilisi, Narikala Fortress. Narikala Fortress currently resides in Old Town Tbilisi and was originally built by Persians, later taken over by Arabs, then by the Georgian King David, then by the Mongols, back by the Georgian, and has passed through many, many hands and many different expansions. Now it's a popular tourist attraction in Tbilisi. Not a hidden gem, but definitely still worth going to. It's free to enter, doors open at 8 a.m., as you walk through the grounds, you feel like you are in a castle walking through fairy tale land. You're also right next to the Tbilisi aerial tramway if you want to use that to kind of go up to get to the fortress or go back down versus hiking or getting a bolt, basically like Uber. The fortress is also a short distance away from other iconic sites, including the sulfur baths and Maiden Bazaar that we mentioned before. And last but certainly not least, we end our day at the Holy Trinity Cathedral of Tbilisi, which is this grand, magnificent Eastern Orthodox Church that was actually built between 1995 and 2004 to commemorate 1,500 years of Christianity in Georgia, one of the first nations actually to adopt Christianity as its official religion. But regardless of your religious background, this is a gorgeous site. Obviously, the exterior of the church is beautiful, but right next to the church entrance is one of the best places to watch the sunset in Tbilisi. It's so beautiful, peaceful, calm. The inside of the church is just as magnificent as the outside and a great place to enjoy. And three bonus sites that I wanted to add for you that aren't really a lot on their own, but could definitely be worth stopping by on your way to one of the other stops are as follows. So number one, we have the Tbilisi Clock Tower, which is this cool, quirky clock tower structure that is obviously kind of a cool little photo spot on its own. At different hours, there will be this little kind of show that displays all of these characters that come out of the clock tower, you know, bang on a drum or sound a trumpet or whatever. And depending on what hour it is, it might last a little bit longer or shorter. So in my opinion, nothing really worth like dedicating time for and making sure you get there at time. But if you happen to pass at one of these times, it's kind of cool to watch. So that's number one. Number two, we have the Bridge of Peace. It's this cool modern style bridge that crosses across the main river in Tbilisi. So if you're heading, for example, from 
Darijan Palace over to the other side to maybe the sulfur bath or the fortress, you would likely naturally cross over the Bridge of Peace. It's nice to walk across with views of the Tbilisi River and fortress in the distance. And number three, we have Liberty Square, which is actually a large roundabout and at the center of this roundabout is this tall tower with a golden monument at the very top of St. George slaying a dragon, which is actually where the name Georgia, or at least the English name for Georgia, comes from is St. George. So it's a cool structure. Now, I expected a lot more to be happening, a lot more activities and restaurants in Liberty Square, but there's a lot of traffic Sidewalks are actually pretty narrow and there's not a lot of great restaurants in my opinion in that area. So it wasn't really worth spending a lot of time there. But like I said, if you're passing through any of these destinations on your itinerary, it uh, could be worth just taking a quick stop. And I do hope you get the opportunity to visit Tbilisi. It's one of the most beautiful cities Ali and I have ever been to and also one of the most interesting. And if you found this video valuable, then you'll love this video that I'll be linking here on the screen as well as the description section where Ali and I vlog our way through Tbilisi, showing you the beautiful side and some of the more unsavory sides of Tbilisi to make sure you have the best experience possible and make sure that you actually do want to visit this city. And as always, thank you so much for watching. God bless you and your journeys and look forward to seeing you in the next adventure.